Well, let's talk now to Dr. Ikan Erdemir, now a senior fellow at the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies in Washington. But you were, of course, a member of the Turkish parliament for four years. I guess the timing here is relevant, isn't it? Both sides, in some sense, playing to domestic audiences? Exactly. The stars seem to have aligned right for the populists. In the Netherlands, uh, there, there are upcoming elections on Wednesday. And in Turkey, there is a crucial referendum on April 16th, which could bestow President Erdogan with executive powers, uh, consolidating one man rule. So both sides, in a way, play, working on different timelines, but playing to the hard right in both countries, in a way. Uh, exactly. Uh, although uh, populists on both ends of this conflict seem to be clashing with one another, uh, actually it's a win-win strategy for them because they seem to be strengthening their hand in their respective uh, elections. Uh, the, the only difference is uh, the difference between timelines. Um, as of Wednesday this week, um, th there is no more incentive in the Netherlands to push for populism, whereas on the Turkish end, uh, Turkey's Islamist Rooted Justice and Development Party has a very strong incentive to escalate the crisis until the referendum. And uh, the very uh, stark measures that we see today are a reflection of that. Turkey will, though, presumably have its eye on future leverage in Europe, won't it? Uh, certainly. And in fact, uh, I think the, the current regime of sanctions cannot be sustained because we have to keep in mind that uh, last year alone, uh, more than 900,000 Dutch tourists came to Turkey, which already represented a 25% decline in uh, comparison to 2015. And Turkey's tourism industry is going through very difficult times. Uh, and in fact, uh, some analysts argue that this could be the final nail in Turkey's uh, tourism sector. So uh, I think uh, President Erdogan will have an incentive following the referendum uh, to de-escalate the conflict. And we also have to keep in mind that the Netherlands, uh, a little known fact in Turkey, is the leading uh, contributor of FDI to Turkey. And Turkey, a country that runs a huge current account deficit, uh, is lately desperate uh, for foreign currency and investment. Uh, so I think following the referendum, uh, the economic reality will take over populism uh, as Turkey steers back to improving relations with the Netherlands. So both sides in many ways very important to each other. Could it possibly get worse before the Dutch election, which is clearly very close, but is it possible things could still escalate? Uh, yes, that is a possibility. And it's not only uh, between the Turkish diaspora and the Dutch authorities, but we have to keep in mind that the Turkish public, just as it is the case in Turkey, is also deeply polarized and divided in the diaspora. For example, when we take a look at almost half a million uh, people of Turkish background in the Netherlands, uh, we see that there are not only Erdogan supporters, but there are also Kurds, there are also Alevis, there are also left-leaning secular Turks who fiercely oppose what Erdogan and his Islamist project stand for. So it is also possible that uh, we might see some intra-Turkish clashes in the Turkish diaspora, not only in Netherlands, but also in Germany, where they number more than three million. Dr. Erdemir, thank you very much. Thank you.